Hey, welcome guys. Yeah, so uh, keep solving, uh, sorry, not keep solving, sorry. <laughs> keep talking about the Riemann integral. Yeah, so today's video, uh, we will prove this theorem and the proof uh, 304 theorem basically uh, connected with the uh, R, the uh, existence of R's integral, right? So up to now, uh, we don't talk about, uh, we just talk about definition, right? And uh, so this theorem says that uh, if F is, uh, Rs integral respect to this alpha or remain integral respect alpha on the closed interval, that means for every epsilon greater than zero, there is this P such that the uh, lower sum minus upper sum is less than epsilon, okay? Okay, so let's give it a proof. Uh, probably this is the uh, the starting points of the this chapter. Uh, okay, so uh, this direction. So this direction is simple. Uh, we prove that uh, this, right? And uh, by definition, uh, by definition, right? If f is uh, r alpha, means that uh, uh, means that what? Uh, means that okay. So previously, we already know that let me just for every partition, we have uh, l uh, let's say uh, p f alpha, and the right u p f alpha, and uh, since we take the soup, will give us the so for upper integral and the lower integral. Right. If you take the info of L, so we have this property, okay? So if F belongs to R, alpha means that uh, you can find the partition. Uh, sorry, if F belongs to R, alpha means that uh, these two are the same, okay? Right, these two are the same. So, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Okay, okay, yeah, let, oh, sorry. Let me just prove this direction for the beginning because this direction is simple, okay? So this means that we need to prove that, we need to use the property, right? So uh, for every for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a partition such that the upper minus lower is le less than epsilon, right? So that means these two is less than epsilon, right? least minus least. So you get the upper minus the lower, well, less than epsilon, right? Then uh, you know that uh, you can change check epsilon to be zero, right? Right, so you get the upper, right, you get sorry, uh, upper minus uh, upper minus lower, okay. So you can take epsilon close to zero. So you prove that the upper uh, equals to lower, okay. Because their difference must be arbitrary small, okay. So this direction is, is uh, almost trivial, right? Because you start from here and uh, you use this uh, inequality Somehow, like you just write down the answer. Okay, so this uh, this direction is uh, what I got to prove. It's a little bit difficult, right? So, so suppose f is r alpha, right? So what 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 it means, right? So it means that the upper and the lower are the same. Right? But somehow this property is very hard to use. So remember that the uh, remember the upper the upper right is the upper is defined to be the inf of the lower. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, of the upper sum. Okay, so and the soup of the this. Okay, so this means that uh, for epsilon greater than zero, right? For epsilon greater than zero, uh, I can find a partition P one. So let's say we got I got some partition P one such that uh, this uh, uh, sorry, such that. Uh, such that at least this uh, implies this thing is super, right? So we'll get the F, the alpha minus L P one F alpha less than epsilon divided by two, right? So by things F is a Riemann integral, so they are the same, right? So I write these two as just F integral. Okay, so is this the P one for uh, this? Because this is property of soup. Okay, and uh, after that, uh, I can uh, do so. There is this P two, right? Such that uh, this uh, low, uh, upper, right? Upper, let's say P two, F alpha minus this F D alpha is less than epsilon. Okay. So we have I have these two properties. Okay. So how to combine these two partition? I can define a partition to be the P one union P two, right? So P one is a set. P two is a set. Uh, you do a partition, right? So this is a P, P is a refinement, as I just uh, talking, so this refinement of P1 and P2. 
Okay, so by the previous video, uh, I think I proved the property that uh, I, I don't I don't write the proof, but it's trivial that uh, if you have a partition uh, refinement, then the lower will uh, lower will increase, upper will decrease. Okay. Okay, so which which means that uh, this property holds for not only p one, right? Holds for p, right? Holds for p. Okay, because this this guy, right? This guy, this f d alpha is larger than LP one F alpha, right? So if you're to talking about refinement, then this increase. So their difference is less. Uh, will be less. Will be smaller, right? Also for this one. So come, you can add these two equation, combine it, then you get the. Uh, 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 you get this UP. Uh, let's say UP. So UP F alpha. Let's say you could do UP two, F alpha less than F D alpha plus epsilon. Uh, less than L P one F alpha uh, plus epsilon less or equal to L P F alpha plus epsilon, right? You just write down everything. So refinement refinement will increase this and uh, decrease. Uh, the refinement will uh, will. Oh, my table. Right. So this is a refinement, right? So re refinement will decrease the upper sum will increase the uh, will increase the lower sum okay so follow these two uh i think you get the answer right you you get the this so now uh this guy and the this guy right there are difference at most state okay okay yeah so this is what we got to prove okay so uh what we already proved okay yeah that's it okay so another theorem which uh we need to prove. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So theorem basically simple, right? So suppose U P. Suppose there's a partition such that the U P F alpha minus L U L P F alpha less than epsilon, right? Suppose uh, you have some proper. So suppose you have some partition and epsilon such that the least equation exists. Right, then you can easily show that by the previous argument. So any partition, any refinement of P, so any refinement of P, let's call it P star. P star also satisfy this property. And the proof is just, uh, uh, I don't want to prove, right? It's just same reason things that the uh, uh, upper sum will decrease, lower sum will, uh, will increase, okay? Uh, yeah. Okay. So this. Uh. So this a is trivial. So I don't want to prove. Uh. Perfectly obvious. Okay. And also. Uh. B says that if this also the same. Uh. Same condition. If this holds, then uh. Let's say uh. You get some S i and T i, which is arbitrary points. So S i and T i are arbitrary points belongs to X i minus one and X i. And then what you have is that the i from one to n and the f, S i minus f. Ti take absolute value. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, take absolute value and delta alpha i, where is alpha i minus alpha i minus one is that's an absolute. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this is also simple, right? Because upper sum is the uh maximum and lower sum is the minimum, right? So if you take any two points inside this, then their difference will will less than this guy, right? And so you will get this. So uh, b is also trivial. Okay, and uh, also C, C says that uh, if f belongs to uh the R's integral alpha, and uh, and then we have the hypothesis, and then suppose uh, what I'm, what I'm trying to say, the hypothesis of B holds. Okay, yeah, so. And then suppose the situation is the same as B. So same as B means that you, uh, yeah, basically you just assume uh, this guy holds and the T, I, and S, I are basically inside this. And then you can get, uh, if you take T, I, which is T, any points in the, T, I is any points inside this. And then you take the delta of I and the sum from I from one to N minus the integration F. The alpha will less than epsilon. 
Right, so basically, this this C just tell tell you that if if R if R F is the so called Riemann integral, then basically your partition, right, your left left partition or any any points, right. So basically, your x i minus one, x i, right, and the uh, t i. So basically, uh, whatever point you choose, right, well, less than F. So this is very intuitive that uh, if your function is integrable, then somehow like when you shrink the uh, width to be arbitrarily small, then whatever point you choose. Whatever partition you use will give you the the same error. Will give you the still get you give you the error bound. Uh, okay, so this guy uh, let's give a proof. So proof is starting from uh, right. So by by b, right, so by b, I get the f s i minus f t i, and uh, take the other alpha i, i from one to n, right? Well, less or equal to uh, u p f alpha minus L P F alpha, right? As we just showed in the B. Uh, obviously that uh, this, this guy, right? This guy, and maybe uh, here. Obviously that uh, your F summation of F T I delta alpha I, right? So this this guy, if it, I take the maximum, right? So you will less or equal to uh, U P one, U U P F alpha, right? And a uh, greater or equal to L P F alpha. Right, so now I just plug it in and you get it. Okay. Okay, so now uh, we can talk about uh, what kind of situation that R, the function can be R's integral. Okay, so theorem. Well, this is an important theorem. So F is continuous. If F is continuous on A, B, then F is a R's Riemann integral. Okay. So this means that the F is continuous, which maybe is, many people use it, but somehow like in a calculus, you don't prove it. F is continuous, then F is integral. It's a Riemann integral. Integrable. Okay. So remember uh, how to prove it. So the proof is how to prove it. The proof is we need to show that uh, given epsilon question is zero, the upper sum, right? The third upper sum, there exists uh, a uh, refinement such that the upper sum uh, minus the lower sum will be arbitrary small. Okay. So uh, I think this proof is simple. So let me just quickly prove. So, proof. so we know that the F is continuous, right? So F is continuous on AB. So uh, this is compact, right? So actually, F is a so called uniform continuous. So you can check out my uh, previous analysis video. I will post a list below. Then you can go to find a section called uniform continuous. Okay. So F is uniform continuous, right? So that means, uh, let's say uh, I take some epsilon delta greater than zero. That means uh, if I choose partition to be small, right? If I choose, uh, so that means uh, for any x, y, so for any, sorry, for any x1, x2 belongs to AB. If there are difference, is less than delta, sorry, there is the delta, then the their difference will less than epsilon delta, right? So that means I can, so I can choose partition. I can choose partition. Let's say partition is a x0, x1, x2, up to xn equals to b. And such that, uh, such that uh, xi minus xi minus one is less than delta, right? Then the for each point, right? For each point, be, for each point inside this integral that set is less, less than the epsilon epsilon delta, right? So, and uh, I can take so that means the minimum and the maximum also less than delta. Uh, sorry, less than delta uh, epsilon delta, right? So that means uh, the m i is which is uh, maximum in uh, each interval minus the small m i minimum of it, that interval. Well, less than this. Okay. So now you can take a times the delta alpha i. Right. And then you take the summation. Right. So this guy is the uh, upper inter upper upper sum minus the lower sum. Okay. Upper sum minus upper sum minus the lower sum. Well, less than epsilon delta, delta, uh, 
alpha i sum from i one to n, right? And then this is uh this is just epsilon delta alpha b minus alpha a. Okay. So I just choose. So remember the alpha is a, a monotone increasing function, right? So I can choose epsilon delta to be epsilon divided by alpha b minus alpha a. Okay, so that means this is left side epsilon, right? So you can use the property of the uniform continuous to easily prove that uh, this, this theory. Okay. I think this theory is not difficult, right? So it just tell you that the continuous function is integrable. And all you need is try to control the, the upper bound minus the lower bound. And uh, if you want to control the upper bound minus the lower bound, you just need to try to say that, oh, if you choose the interval to be small, then since it's continuous, so their maximum and the minimum can be arbitrarily small, right? And they use this property to prove. Okay, okay. Yeah, so see you then which is also uh, people like to use uh, if f is monotone. So remember, we just proved that uh, the continuous function is integrable, right? So now I, well, I want to prove that if, if f is monotone and uh, but plus the condition say that alpha is continuous. So remember that in the previous video, I don't use the alpha is continuous, which I don't care, right? But in this video, but in this theorem, we need to we need a, a property that if, f is monotone and alpha is continuous, then f is still a Riemann integral, a Riemann integral uh, respect to on, so basically on AB. Okay, R is integral, proof. Do the same thing, right? We need to control something, some smart guy, right? So let's say, let's say the alpha i is a, so uh, let's say I, I choose the equal partition, so alpha b minus alpha a divided by n, okay? And then now that mi is a super of f x i, mi is a inf of x i, right? So by the previous property of monotone, uh, uh, right? This mi just uh, sorry, yeah, uh, sorry, in uh, sorry, what, what I'm writing? So this is x, right? X, but x is between the x i minus one and x i, right? So by the property of the monotone, the maximum will be what? Will be the right, right? So let's suppose that f is increasing. So this guy is just f x i. <laughs> this guy is f x my i minus one. Right, simple enough. So uh, what is your uh, upper lower minus lower, right? At this part, this kind of partition, right? Just alpha b minus alpha a divided by n and the summation of i from one to n f x i minus minus f is i minus one, right? And this is just discrete, right? So each term canceled. So finally your upper sum minus lower sum is just alpha b minus alpha a divided by n f of b minus f of a, right? Because the two sides cancel. And then this guy can be that arbitrary small, less epsilon, right? By n increasing. So if n increasing to infinity, then this guy can be arbitrary small. So we prove that the fiber epsilon there exists the partition. So we prove that for epsilon, epsilon greater than zero, there exists a partition such that the, the upper sum respect to that partition minus the lower sum respect to that partition is less than epsilon. Okay. Okay, so now, uh, now there's another two theorem. Uh, um, let me see, let me see uh, whether I should, uh, postpone to next okay so don't worry let's keep proving okay so now still there are two theorem which remaining there okay so suppose suppose f is bounded on a b and the f has uh finitely finitely many points of discontinuity discontinuity on a b and alpha is continuous. Uh, every point, so every point, alpha is continuous on every point, such that uh, uh, on which point? On every discontinuity point of F. Then, 
No, F belongs to R alpha. Okay, so this theorem is very tricky, right? So it says that uh, if you have a function which is, uh, we will prove that if function is continuous, which is R is integral, if not, uh, so now this theorem says that, oh, it's, I mean, it's fine, right? Suppose you have finite, some finite uh, discontinuity, but your uh, D alpha, which alpha is a very nice guy, alpha continuous at, uh, at every point of that discontinuity, then F is integral. Okay, so there is a theorem that uh, maybe in the uh, uh, very uh, far future, I will, this is called the Riemann the back theorem. So there is a theorem it's called Riemann the back, Riemann the back theorem or the so-called lemma says that uh, F is a Riemann integrable. So usually people talk Riemann integrable by choosing alpha to be X, if and only if uh, the discontinuity of F, right? so let's say a discontinuity set of F is measure zero. Okay, so this is the uh, very far future I will uh, give the proof. So, but, but basically, uh, in this in in this case, it's just a very special case of the, this uh, much powerful theory. Uh, the, the powerful uh, reason is this is if and only if. Okay, so let's uh, let's see how to prove it. Uh, let's so this proof is a very uh, to be difficult. Suppose let's epsilon given and then that m to be a super f. Okay, then the e to be the discontinuity. The set of discontinuity, okay, and uh, since e, so e is finite, right? So e is finite, so that means uh, and alpha is continuous at every point of e, so you can cover. So let's, so this is the old trick. So that we can cover points in e by uh, the interval. Let's say u j v j, okay, and j label the point in e. So j label the point in e, and the u j v j as an interval, which is a uh, open interval covering it, okay? Uh, now, uh, such that what? Such that uh, alpha vj minus alpha uj uh, is less than epsilon. So basically, uh, suppose you have a point which is discontinuity j, right? And I choose two guy, I choose a smart, uh, small interval, which is a uj and a vj. And at least small interval can be arbitrary small, right? Because it's finite, so I can, shrink this uh, interval however I want, such that uh, satisfy this property. Okay. And uh, there is a technical uh, condition that the technical, uh, technical think that uh, you, you can, you, you must place the interval to, to make sure that this interval, uh, to make sure that this interval is in AB and also uh, E intersection with this AB uh, so such that uh, so so such that every point so every point of E intersection AB lies in the interior so lies in the interior of some uh, UJVJ. Uh, don't worry, just some technical condition. But you can by your drawing or into your intuition, this is correct. Okay. Now I can, I can now, okay, so now I just, I just remove, so just remove, just remove the, this segment, U, J, V, J from A, B. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah, you remember, remove some uh, open interval, right? So the remaining, say, say the remaining is K, which is compact. And uh, I know that F is continuous, right? So F is, now F is continuous on K, right? So F is county on K. So that means F is uniformly county on K. Continuous on K. So that means uh, for epsilon greater than zero, right? There is this delta greater than zero such that uh, when uh, S minus T is less than delta, F of S minus F of T is less than epsilon, right? So since we have this, then the, uh, then we just take the partition, right? We say take the partition. Okay. So, uh, right, so the party, we take sub partition and then the following says, uh, and then we choose the following condition, right? So suppose uh, if uj, so let's say, so each, each uj uh, occurs in P, 
right? So basically, uh, this means that uh, if you if I just pick a UJ, right, I can, I I will uh, force UJ belongs to P. So each UJ belongs to P, and the VJ belongs to P, and. Uh, And the no and the no points of any segment of any segment uj vj in p. So basically, what I'm saying is that I I I I put this continuity points at the endpoints of the partition, and the, uh, any other points which inside that interval do not put them in the partition. Okay, so. Uh, now the trick comes from right. So now we I know that my minus small and my on each out open interval. Uh, sorry, each partition is still less than equal to two m, right? For each i, and I know that m i minus m i is less or equal to epsilon, right? Unless, unless what? Unless x i is one of of u j, right? Because uh, if it's since function is continuous except for this point. So this sentence still correct unless the end point is one of these. Okay, so uh, by the previous theorem, I think we still have this U1 PF alpha minus L PF alpha, right? It's less or equal to alpha B minus alpha A epsilon plus two M epsilon, right? So this is just using the previous results that you just still, you just prove, you just write down everything, right? Things, uh, I think it's easy to prove. Okay, so uh, now uh, epsilon is arbitrary. Right, so I can make our epsilon arbitrary small, okay? So F, epsilon can be arbitrary small, right? So now uh, F is, belongs to the remain integral, okay? Yeah, so the prob yeah, so the proof we just uh doing some trick. I think it's not difficult. Okay, and uh, I think the most important part in this theorem is that uh, uh alpha is continuous on every discontinuity of AB. Okay, so this is the the trick that uh, this is the, the most important uh, part. Okay. Okay, and the uh, final theorem, this final theorem is the, also a meet, uh, neat theorem. So F is R alpha on AB. We, we somewhat like don't talk, haven't talked about the composition of the function, right? So my idea is that the two integral composition, fun, the composition of two integrable functions should be, should be integral, okay? And uh, let's say small m, this, let's say m is, F is bounded, right? Uh, this is my condition, right? Otherwise, f will not be integrable, and the phi is continuous. So phi is conti uh, on m and m. So I need to talk about composition, right? So let's define h of x to be phi of f of, a, phi of, f of x. Then h is con h is integrable r uh, remain integrable alpha on a b. Okay, so this this is just saying that the the map, so the con the continuous. Okay, so I just say the composition, the composition of continuous function of integral function is still into. Okay, so that means uh, you have integrable function and then you put put them into a continuous function and sure it's still integrable. Let's give it a proof. Okay, so the proof is uh, very, I think it's very lengthy and uh, tedious. Right? The, let me just go through one time for epsilon greater than zero. And I know that phi is uniformly continuous, right? So I do the same trick. So I, I don't waste of, uh, I don't waste the time. So that's, so I know that uh, if S minus T is less than uh, delta then this guy can less than epsilon right so their maximum yeah the maximum minimum is less. So, okay so let's say we got some partition so f is r alpha let's say we got some partition and then let's say we are so things are integrable right so i can make the partition to be uh arbitrary small so let's make it less than delta squared okay Right, so I, I also have mi and the uh, small mi and the, I, I let m small mi and the 
so large MI and small MI to be the to be the uh, standard as a super and inf on each interval of f. Okay. Mm, I, so I define as mi star, which is and the small mi star to be the uh, super of h f, right? So and the x is still on that partition. Okay, so okay, mm, okay. So let me just write down the things, which are a little bit complicated. Yeah, so right, so I have the partition, right? So I get partition which is x zero, x one, up to x n, and the my and the, my condition is that uh, right, so there are two cases, right? So. Uh, there are two cases, right? So the first case is that uh, let's define a set A. If I belongs to A, if uh, larger mi minus small mi is less than delta, and I belongs to B, if mi minus small mi less or greater or equal to delta. Okay. Okay, so let's just make for each I, right? And take this and ask whether this condition because delta is I choose. I choose epsilon when there's a fixed delta for phi. So I can I can separate the partition into two cases such that there are difference less than delta or greater than delta. And I, I will try to bound these two guys. Okay. Okay, so uh the for, for the first guy, so the for A, which there are different less than delta, right? I can just make I can just uh uh right since it's less than delta, right? So by our <laughs> property I can get that by this, uh, I choose this for phi, right? So the composition, sorry, uh, I said it's phi, right? So the composition of this guy is, so this guy will imply that at my star, my say my star with less than epsilon. Okay. Uh, yeah. So for A, I get this. Uh, how about B? So now I need to control B, right? So for the B, uh, I, I get this. I can still bound this, right? Because K, I can take the K to be the soup of the phi of T, right? Which is a T from uh, this small m to large m, okay? Because phi is continuous function, right? So on the compact set, it's super, it exists, right? So the bounds, bound, the largest and the smallest bounded by two times this. Okay, so uh, so start from this, right? I got this equation. What the hell is going on? Okay, so we we'll start from this, this, right? Uh, so this is this this was this means that m i uh minus m i, right? Delta alpha i less than delta square, right? So this is greater than uh delta delta alpha i i from b, right? Because uh. B only a subset of original one, right? Of, of the whole partition, right? So I can I get this uh, equality. Okay, so from here I know that uh, delta i belongs to B, delta, uh, so i belongs to B and delta alpha i is less than delta. Okay. Okay, so finally, uh, finally, I want to compute the uh, the least, right? U pH alpha minus U A O. PH alpha, right? So I need to compute the difference with upper and lower sum uh, with respect to the con with respect to the the composite function, right? So this guy is just let's say I belongs to A, right? So two so M I star minus M I star. This is the the first part, delta alpha I, and the another is I belongs to B, another part, M I star minus M I star. I, right, so first, the first guy is simple, right? This guy is less than delta, so it's less than, sorry, less than epsilon, so it's alpha b minus alpha d. Plus uh, 2k delta, right? So this guy is less than 2k, and then this sum of delta alpha i is less than delta. Okay, and uh, now this is less than epsilon alpha b minus alpha a plus 2k, okay? Uh, the reason is that uh, 
Yeah, right. Oh, sorry. I just put this. Yeah, again. So uh pick up this. Okay. Uh yes. Oh, 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 sorry. Uh yeah, so fi finally, uh, somehow like I, I sorry, so finally I somehow do a trick that the delta I force delta to to be less than epsilon. Right, somehow very weird, but actually I can do in this time. Uh, I can do this step, right? Suppose for epsilon greater than zero, I can find delta, right? So I can choose particular delta such that that delta is less than epsilon, right? So I need to write a, another sentence such that delta less than epsilon. Then uh, I can write this. So now epsilon can be arbitrary small, right? So this upper and minus lower can be arbitrary small. Okay, so finish your proof. Yeah, so this proof is uh, very, uh, very uh, tedious, right? So you need to you need to first uh, separate you need to first separate the partition into two parts, and the first part, which is less than delta, you use so less than delta part. You use what? You use the property of the continuous, right? So this this use the phi is continuous, and the least part you use the f is integral. So somehow like you combine these two property and uh, massage it and try to bound the final results, right? So these these two uh, separately use different properties, and then finally you just write down and try to bound. So this is is the interesting part of analysis that you try to bound something and the uh, yeah. Okay, so next time we talk about the property of the integral, uh, which is should be very easy and uh, connected with the differentiation, and uh, talk about something called the rectifiable curves. And I think the this is the most uh, important part in the integral. Yeah, and uh, then we move to the uniform continuous, a uh, uniform convergence. See you guys uh, next videos. Bye bye.